All right. Thank you guys for attending. I hope you all like to save money because that is what we are going to enable you to do. Um, I'm Megan and this is Ziv. We are program managers on the Azure Compute team. And we have available now is low priority VMs with VM scale sets. So what is low priority scale sets? Basically, it's the same scale sets that you know and love, but you get up to an 80% discount. So if you're, running Win Lin if you're running Linux, you get 80%. If you're running Windows, you get 60%. Um, the catch here, though, is that there are no availability guarantees. And so the way it actually works is on the Azure platform, we have a set amount of capacity. And so we actually, though, have a little bit of buffers in place to t account for customer growth and to account for service healing, other things like that. So what we actually allow low priority customers to do is go and use this unutilized capacity that we keep for our buffers, and they get a big discount with that 80%. The catch, though, is that if a customer who's paying regular price comes in and needs that space, we can actually go and evict those VMs. And so by eviction, what happens is that your VMs are actually not running anymore. And so obviously this only works with certain type of workloads. You actually need, the ideal workload is to have something that's flexible, that can handle interruptions, things like container orchestration, batch processing, dev tests, proof of concepts, demos, things like that where you can really save a good chunk of money if you can deploy with low priority. So once again, for low priority, there's no availability SLA, so no capacities guaranteed for these. You're only on one fault domain, so we don't spread you across multiple. And two, there's no service healing. And so if your VM is on a node that goes down, then instead of moving you to another node like we would in a normal case, we'd actually just evict you. And so what does eviction actually mean? For customers, you can actually specify what you want to happen when VMs are evicted. By default, they'll move to the stop deallocated state and so when that happens, you're maintaining all of your disks. You're able to redeploy those VMs. It's actually really nice if you need to keep those underlying disks. However, if you don't need the disks, it's actually better to delete. And the reason why is that you don't incur the costs of the storage anymore. Um, and so it's better. That way, you don't have to do cleanup afterwards, things like that, to go delete all the disks. So if you don't need them, I would just go with the delete policy. And what's great with the delete as well is that we actually have auto scale integration. And so if you think about it, if you deploy a low priority scale set with, let's say, 20 VMs, and all of a sudden, one of your VMs get evicted. So now you're at 19 instances. What actually happens is auto scale, you can set up the rules to say, I always want to try to deploy 20 or have 20 instances allocated. Auto scale will automatically try to create and get you back up to that 20 instance count. So you don't have to do that as customers. Auto scaling will actually go and always try to maintain that 20% uh, or 20 VMs. The catch, though, is, of course, capacity is not guaranteed. So it's not guaranteed that auto scale will succeed, but it will keep trying until it does. So how do you use this low priority? We are in public preview today. We are in all regions. We have all VM size support, except for B-Series and DV2 promo. And then coming soon, we're actually bringing in notification support. Well, we'll actually give you a 30-second heads up. Hey, you're about to be evicted in case you want to do any type of work to drain the network, things like that. Um, and two, we're also going to integrate with a better quota management experience. So look for this in a couple few months. We're going to GA here soon. And then here we've got a shot of what we've actually have in the portal. And so on the VM scale set create, you can actually easy go, easily go and select. I want uh, my instance count of two. I want to deploy DS1v2. And I want to deploy it as low priority. So it's just this easy switch in the portal. And you can even choose your eviction policy on the portal as stop deallocate or delete. Similarly, we've got CLI. Um, here's this example where it's just a VMSS create call. Here you can set the priority to low and the eviction policy to delete. So this is really great once again to get that 80% discount on Linux. This is a fixed price, so there's no bidding involved. You don't have to worry about any of that. You only pay 20% of the cost. All right, with that, let's actually go check it out. So here, let's see. Here we have a lot of VM scale sets already deployed. Um, you can see here, you can tell if they're priority. Stop. Oh, that's not there. Let's see if we can get our portal on. Looks like the demo gods might not be in our you favor today. Open portal there. 
Can we do a control P? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Duplicate. Awesome. awesome. Here we go. Thank you. All right. Now we're back. So here you can actually see all of our scale sets that we've got deployed. You can easily tell which one are lo low priority, which one are regular priority. But what I'm actually going to go do is add a new scale set. And so when you click that button, it will take you to the VM scale set creation blade. And here we can easily input uh, your, your, your virtual machine name. So I'm going to do test low pri. And then here I'm going to do a new resource group, and I'm going to call it uh, test test low pry, and then I'm going to, let's see here, deploy. Let's change it up to East US 2 because I know I have quota. So low priority quota comes from the same quota as your on-demand instances right now. Um, so that's one thing that just note that it comes from the same pool. And then here, I'm going to make my instance count 20. And I'm going to turn low priority on to yes. So I'm OK with the DS1 v2. But I'm actually going to choose delete, because I want to be able to uh, use that auto scale integration. The other cool thing here is that if you do show advanced settings, you can also enable scaling beyond 100 instances. And so what this allows you to do, it actually allows you to spread across multiple, uh, it allows you to spread across a whole region. So you're not tied to a specific, any type of specific hardware. So you can actually get better chances of allocation when you set this to yes. And then I can go over here and just enable auto scale. And I'm going to go ahead. I want my 20 instances, so I'm going to make that both my minimum and my maximum. So auto scale will always try to get me those 20 count instance. And then I'm not going to change anything on the percentages. I'm OK with those having 75 and 25. And now I'm just going to come down and create a quick load balancer. So my public IP, I'll have test low pry. Test low pry. Everything's all right here. We'll create a new virtual network. And we'll also call this test low pry one and create. So now we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and create that um, skill set. And so while this is loading up and starting to create the 20 instances, I'm actually just going to make sure it validates, it's going. But for now, I'm actually going to go and check out my other skill set that I already have deployed. So this one we already have on. It's a DS1v2. It's got 20 instances. If you click the See More tab, you can already see it's low priority. We can also click on the properties and see that we have an eviction policy set to delete. And then what we can also do is look at the instances. And so if we come over here, it's funny because you'll actually see that um, we've got 20 instances running. And let this load real fast. All right. Give it one more minute. There we go. So we have 20 instances, but you can see my counts are in the 700s. So every time Autoscale recreates a VM after one was evicted, it uses a new instance count. So you can see that this scale set has been running for quite some time because we're already at 700 instances. And it's always trying to regain that capacity if I'm ever evicted. So this is actually really nice. We can then also go to the activity log. And this is where you'll actually be able to see those auto scaling events. And so here, we can actually see um, 13 minutes ago, there was an auto scale up initiated, then auto scale completed, and our virtual machine scale set was updated. And so this, these three events kind of signal that something was evicted due to low priority, someone else coming in and taking that capacity. Um, but auto scale was able to reclaim that somewhere else. So it's kind of cool. You can go and you can see for the past week or so, let's see, um, we're, we see evictions um, every now and then. Uh, on this one in particular, we see it about every two to three hours. So it's pretty good. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ziv, who's going to talk a little bit more about additional tips for scale sets. And let's go ahead and Thank get you, back Megan. here. So uh, VM scale sets, uh, low priority scale sets, were first picked by Azure Batch. In fact, the low priority offer of Azure Batch runs on top of uh, low priority scale sets. But uh, we've seen more and more use cases where actually scale sets make sense. And when looking at those use cases, customers want better experience when it comes to eviction, meaning I want some sort of a predictable or reduce the chances of my instances being evicted. So these are like uh, all the tips we managed to collect based on these experiments and experiences uh, from customers. 
So to begin with, if you're looking for auto scale, make sure you use deletion policy. The deletion policy is the non-default, but you need to change it so that auto scale will work. Otherwise, your VM will just be evicted and shows as deallocated and the auto scale won't kick in. By the way, you want to keep the default eviction policy if it takes you longer time to prepare and create this image and you want to keep reusing this image. Or you keep state, local state on this local image. The second um, option, as Megan mentioned, is use the large scale option of the VM scale set. With the large scale option, if you, even if you deploy relatively small low priority scale set, we will spread your scale set across multiple clusters or stems by doing so, reducing the chance, reducing the probability of your instances to be evicted. The VM size will, uh, is related to, to the eviction uh, uh, pr uh, probability. In other words, if you go with a larger size of low priority scale set, there is a higher probability that we will have to use this room, this capacity, and actually evict your low priority instances. And the last is actually going to be our next demo. We've learned that customers want you know, a minimum guaranteed number of instances, or they want to grow using low pry, but then if we cannot satisfy the, the demand with low pry, they want to pay on demand. So we've created, we've built this hybrid scale set, as we call it, which is uh, nothing more than a template that we have shared where we put two scale sets behind the single load balancer. One in a, is an on-demand and the other is low priority. So when we want to scale, we first scale with the low priority and only if Azure cannot satisfy this um, demand, we will scale the regular the on-demand scale set. Now this could be done either by applying different auto-scaling rules. Let's say that I will trigger auto-scaling uh, I will check every five minutes, look back five minutes, sorry, I will check every one minute um, on a five minutes window, and then if the CPU threshold is 30, I will scale. So I will scale first this low pry, and let's say if the threshold hits 60, I will scale the regular pry. Or just say, I want two guaranteed VMs, and the rest I want to use auto scale. All right? So let's look at one of those hybrid um, scale sets. So the template looks the same and, in fact, um, has been released. So you can just go and deploy it. Ziv, it's not, it's not up again. Windows P, maybe? Oh, again? Do we do the dance again? So you can see my hybrid scale set, where basically I have one standard load balancer and uh, two and uh, two VM scale sets. Both one is low pry and the other is on demand. Okay. One I called LP stands for low priority, and the other is reg stands for regular priority or on demand. Now. One is just fixed number of VMs, and the other will auto-scale. So if I look at my low priority, you can see that currently my scale set is scaling down from 3 to 1. And the reason for that is that the scaling rules are based on CPU. And I've asked to scale out when CPU um, utilization reach 60% and then scale down where it falls to 30%. Okay, so these two auto scaling rules gives me the flexibility. And I also specified that this low priority will scale between one and five instances. So the way this hybrid scale set actually 
serves this kind of very simplistic web workload where I go and I can initiate work on those instances. So all I do is I ask the scale set to do work, okay? And I will see, I will see that instance zero in my low priority scale set is now working, okay? Since we are behind the load balancer, if I click again, then I may see different instance or may see the same instance as well. Uh, LP0 still the same. So looking back at the scale set, and since I mentioned the uh, five minutes time window, so it won't scale, but look back, we've tried this earlier. So when we bump the scale set, it basically added more instances to compensate or to, to provide this demand. So we first scaled the low priority, and only if we could not provide those instances, we will scale the on-demand. So by combining those two scale sets, you get the guaranteed number of instances. That's the on-demand. Those instances you will be paying for, the full price. And we grow and burst and provide whatever demand using the low priority scale set with the 80% discount on non-Windows and the 60% discount on Windows. With that, basically we're done. So uh, low priority scale set has been in preview for the last few months now. We are heading to, uh, towards the GA later this year. It is available in all of the public Azure regions. And uh, you can find blog posts, videos, tutorials, the templates I mentioned, and much more. Uh, overall in uh, our website. All right, thank you for uh, being here, and I wish you pleasant remaining of Ignite. Go enjoy Ignite. All right, if you have any questions, please join us here. Thank you, guys.